Right, hi everyone, this is BTEC Applied Psychology. This is looking at reasons for non-adherence. Um, and this is really all about why do people stop taking medication or why would people not take medication or do something that's been prescribed by their doctor? That's really the, um, the question that this is asking. How can we encourage people to be healthy by uh, following the advice of their doctor or continuing to take treatment that's been prescribed by their doctor? Because it's actually relatively common for people not to do that apparently. So in terms of um, explanations, the first one that we look at is called rational non-adherence. Uh, adherence is just when you stick to something. So non-adherence is when you, you don't stick to something. Rational means that you you've sort of thought about it sensibly uh, and come to a conclusion. So in a sentence, this is what the theory is, that people fail to follow medical advice, otherwise known as non-adherence, because they weigh up the pros and the cons of following the advice. Uh, in other words, they do what we call a cost-benefit analysis, and then they decide that it's logical or makes sense not to take their medication. In a sentence, that's what this theory is about. That's why it's called rational non-adherence. It comes from um, a, a, um, a decision that's been made after weighing up carefully. So that's why it's thought of as rational. So let's look at some of the things that play into this cost-benefit analysis. Um, first of all, the benefits, obviously, of following your doctor's advice are reducing or eliminating the symptoms of a disease or illness. Um, but So one thing that plays into that as patients are thinking about this is how much the symptoms of that illness or disease are bothering them. So um, if you've got a disease or an illness that's making you really uncomfortable, um, then reducing or eliminating that will be a really big, important thing. And so that'll be a really big benefit that will, will be bigger. If you've got a disease such as diabetes where, um, or such as high blood pressure, where there's something that's quite seriously wrong, but it doesn't cause you a lot of discomfort on in your day-to-day -day life, but can still lead to like a really negative outcome later. Actually, that can be a um, less of a big thing for people because if they're not like suffering day to day, then they may put less weight on that because they don't have like really bad symptoms at that moment. So they may put less weight on that as a benefit. If we look at the costs, um, the costs of taking medication, obviously side effects is very often a big one um, and there can be side effects of medication that can be really, really negative, um, it, such as uh, insomnia, not being able to sleep, uh, diarrhea, um, dizziness, lack of sexual function, you, kind of you name it, it goes on. So the, that needs to be weighed up against the, the benefits. Other things that might be on the sort of, if we look at pros and cons, things that might be on the, the cons side, financial barriers. So if they have to pay for the medication, they're less likely to keep taking it because that's like, particularly for people who are living in poverty, that's a big thing. Um, but even for people who aren't, it, it makes them less inclined to do it. Um, patient pr practitioner relationship is another thing that plays into it. If your doctor is quite authoritative and has what's called a practitioner centered approach where like they're the one in charge and there's like a professional distance between you, then actually you're less likely to follow their advice than if they're a bit more friendly and it, it seems like you're at the center of the decision that's being made and they're taking on board what you think and so on, then you're more likely in that case to follow their advice and adhere to your medication keep taking it um, another big barrier is a lack of understanding if you've been prescribed a medication but you don't really understand why you have to take it then you're much less likely to keep taking it um, you, you equally might not remember like the advice that you were given or might not understand like how often you have to take it and sort of get confused and end up giving up um, 
So those, all of those things can be like barriers to someone taking it. And so what someone will do is weigh those things up against each other. If the benefit that it's going to get rid of a really horrible symptom um, outweighs some of these other problems that we've just talked about, then they are likely to adhere. They'll keep, keep taking it. But if these um, costs, these barriers outweigh the benefits, for example, if it's a an illness without many symptoms um, and then they take a medication and it gives them a horrible symptom, that could then, they may weigh up and say, well, actually, I don't want this side effect. I'm not going to take it. And that's them making a deliberate decision that they're not going to follow medical advice. And so um, that's that's this theory, basically, that's called rational non-adherence, the theory that people weigh, weigh up their medication in this way and that affects whether or not they'll, they'll adhere to it. So if we move on to the evaluation of this theory then, what evidence do we have that these things really do affect people's decisions to take medication? So first of all, um, Bullpit and Fletcher, this is your key study. We'll talk a bit more about this in a minute. But the side effects in that study um, led to non-adherence to medication. I'm not going to go into detail now because I'll talk about that in a minute. Kramer uh, was another study that was carried out and they were looking at um, the number of doses people had to take and how that affected the adherence level. So if it's just a, a drug where you take like one pill then that's relatively easy um it's not such a, a big pain in the neck um as if you have to take three doses and remember to take three doses and remember whether or not you've had your three doses and it it becomes more complicated doesn't it and you can see the statistics here that actually adherence levels that that they kept 88% of people kept going with their medication if it was only one dose, but by the time it's gone up to three doses, it's only 39%, it's really dropped. So that's, that tells us that actually it's that, if we go back to this slide, it's this lack of understanding is, is a big barrier uh, and sort of the inconvenience weighing into that, the inconvenience and difficulty of having to, to deal with lots of doses of drugs. Um, and then the last study that we have that's supporting evidence is quite an interesting Spanish study uh, where they looked at a, a time when people had to start paying for their medication and they were particularly looking at, at, at the elderly and found that those people who uh, had been prescribed more expensive drugs were far less likely to keep taking them um, but would keep going with cheaper doses cheaper drugs basically so it's suggesting here in this study that cost and having financial reasons um, did affect again like like we said here financial barriers um, did come into play again so it's saying it's really supporting the fact that we have side that side effects weigh into this decision that um, understanding and inconvenience weigh into the decision and then thirdly that um, financial barriers also weigh into the decision so those three studies that link to all those things that we just talked about and that support that they are involved. Um, if we then look at weaknesses of this theory that people um, make this decision in this sort of way, actually it's been pointed out that patients uh, are, are not always really rational. Um, often other things can affect our decision making, such as our emotions or stress. Or um, Actually, the theory sort of implies it's a calm, rational process, but it may be something else totally that's causing an overreaction or something that's not rational at all. So... Um, it, it's been the theory has been criticised for that reason that people aren't always as rational as this theory ap ap implies. Right, let's have a look then at this key study that's attached to um, this topic. So Bullpit and Fletcher, and you'll need as always to work through this in your key study booklet if you haven't, because this is just a summary and you will need more detail than what there is here in order to be able to tackle those longer questions in the exam. 
Um, but what it was, basically, it's looking at patients with hypertension. That means high blood pressure. It's one of those, um, one of the things I was talking about where you don't necessarily have a lot of symptoms of it, but it, it is dangerous because over time it can lead to heart attacks and, and so on. So it's really important that if you do have high blood pressure, for your health, you need to adhere to your medication. You need to, to keep taking your medication but it doesn't have a lot of symptoms it doesn't really make you uncomfortable so that's what this study is looking at people with high blood pressure and they were looking particularly at side effects of a drug treatment and how it interacted with their everyday life so the findings were really that it supported the idea of side effects being a big influence on non-adherence where people stopped taking the drug so one study Remember, it was a review of studies. I'm not sure I actually said that. Uh, it's reviewing several other studies. One study that it reviewed um, was found that 8% of males had stopped taking the medication because it was causing sexual problems. Um, another one was where it was causing a side effect of the drug that they were taking was causing memory problems and that was affecting work you know these things are understandable aren't they if people stop taking medication for this reason um and so this study really supported the idea that um side effects have play a major part in someone's decision whether or not they're going to adhere to a course of medication um it's a good study and it supports the theory, but it's not perfect. Let's look at um, our evaluation of this study. Practical applications, first of all, really important for us to understand these things because we're looking at health psychology. We're looking at how can we improve health? How can we get people to the psychology of health? How can we improve people's health? And actually knowing that these side effects uh, can stop people taking drugs, knowing that the um, it means that first of all that we have to keep developing drugs without side effects but also patient practitioner relationship think about being more patient centered that can improve improve adherence so um uh, well in fact that's really for the theory not for this study that's a practical application for the theory um but yeah for this study really you need to focus actually on the practical applications of knowing about side effects having such a big impact and one of those things is developing more drugs um, but another thing actually is making sure that people understand the benefit of taking their drugs um so for these people who are experiencing quite negative side effects really important to discuss with them first like yes they may be side effects but you have to understand like the serious long-term consequences if you don't take it so it's about making sure knowing they're going to make that analysis and helping them with with making it better um, and then the disadvantage of this study really was that it was a review of other people's research often people um kind of um look at the studies and make a, a judgment first before they do this kind of review about how good these other studies are but Bulpit and Fletcher don't include information on whether they've done this so it means that we can't be really confident that all the studies that they selected were really good ones for this so it might be that some of the studies lack validity um, so that is your key study for this area